So I made a video explaining why there are starvation in socialist countries and how you get to that point. As well as why people claim that it's not real socialism because when you look at socialist nations like the Soviet Union or communist China, you end up with authority, you end up with fascism. And I explained exactly the steps through which it happens. And some people offer some criticism which I would like to tackle. So the first one, people are saying, well, so you're claiming that because we're raising minimum wage, you get starvation and authority. And obviously, I am overly simplifying things. I'm not saying that if you raise the minimum wage, you get to starvation. But what I am saying is that when you have various measures taken by the government in order to reduce wealth inequality and they start tinkering with the market, it ends up with a domino effect where they keep having to fix troubles to the point where eventually it leads to starvation and authority, right? So first they go like, all right, let's raise minimum wage, which leads to unemployment and higher prices, which uh, requires now welfare in order to take care of the people that are unemployed. This means you need to raise taxes. Then the rich people leave, businesses shut down. The government steps in and tries to regulate price or takes over those businesses which leads to ineffective management, which leads to starvation, which leads to protests, and protests lead to authority, right? So it's like a domino effect. It's not, it's not that just raising the minimum wage is going to have you get jackboots on the streets and the government looking at people's phones and their communication to make sure that no one is protesting. No, but it's, it's like a multitude of events where the government keeps mixing with the free market. Like, so the moral of the story is just leave the free market alone. Just leave it alone. The best economists in the world are saying this. Leave the free market alone. Objectively speaking, you look at human history, nations that left the free market alone had better standards of living than nations that thought you can tinker with the market. Just leave it alone. Just go away. Another criticism is also regarding minimum wage. People were saying, well, okay, but like a company which is starting to make a profit, it has been proven that it's not going to raise the wage of their employees. And my question is like, who said that a company who gets more profit is going to raise the wages of their employees? Like literally no one made this claim. Now it can happen. Yes, like when a company gets profit, one of the possibilities is that it can raise the wage of their employees. Another possibility is that it can reinvest the profit and it can open new businesses. So you're lowering the overwhelming unemployment in the country. Like for example, if a McDonald's starts becoming profitable, they open another McDonald's, which means more jobs. More jobs means less unemployment. Less unemployment means less reliance on welfare, less welfare, less taxes, and so on and so forth. So you, you need to think from the perspective of Companies having profits means more places to work. And secondly, you need to look at the worst paid jobs, like the minimum wage jobs. What are they? Like burger flipping at McDonald's, being a waitress, uh, being a barista at a coffee shop. These are not jobs that people want to do for their entire life. Okay, Marxist? Like, we, we don't live in the time of the factory where people would start a job at a factory and they would work there until they're old and die. Like we, we move past that. We're in a more dynamic economy. So these are jobs that are entry level. For example, a teenager who finished high school might consider getting a job at McDonald's and flip a burger for a couple of months in order to, to gain experience. You know, like when you go to take a job and they're asking you, like, what is your experience? And you have none. And you don't have experience because you never had the job, but you need the experience to get a job. You know that? Like that, that is this. This is why it's happening. This. Because you don't have these entry-level jobs. And I, I'm telling you this from my personal experience. Like, I wanted to open a cat cafe two years ago. And thank God I did it. You know, th thank God for my leftist government in Romania, which prevented me from doing so. Because had I done it, like, the pandemic would have came and it would have shut down my business. But, like, the thing is, like, I wanted to invest, right? Like, I, I wanted to invest something in the community. It would have been nice. But then you realize that, oh, you, you have to pay minimum wage. Now, I had someone, I had a friend who really likes cats, and we came to an understanding, but that wouldn't have worked. Why? Because the government forces you to pay minimum wage. So I didn't have that much money, like literally, like mathematically, on the numbers. I wouldn't be able to afford to pay someone 
like all, all the taxes and all the pension and all of that which comes with employing another person. So, while I could have had the cat cafe and I could have started it, and maybe in the future if it was profitable, obviously I could have hired more staff and I could have paid people better and then I would expand. But none of it happened. Why? Because of this shit. And meanwhile, you have IT companies. I had a, a friend of mine who worked at an IT company and she said that she's paid under minimum wage. And I was like, how the fuck is that possible? And she said, well, very simple. They force us to be self-employed, like start our own business. So she had a limited company, an LTD, I guess, is the equivalent in uh, the United States. And she had a limited company and she was contracting with the IT company. So in other words, like they had thousands of quote unquote private contractors that would come to the office as if they're employed. They would spend there more than eight hours. They, they, they would be paid under minimum wage. And this is just a loophole that big corporations do in order to get around this shit, right? But like the upstart businessman, the upstart entrepreneur that might like to try to, to create some jobs, he can't. He literally can't. He doesn't have the money. I don't have the resources of an IT company. And, and if I were to get sued for doing that, I don't have a legal department, right? So big corporations, they benefit from this. This is why a lot of big corporations love minimum wage. Like you're going to see that corporations like Amazon and, and other, you know, like multi-trillion dollar enterprises, they're like, oh yes, minimum wage needs to be raised because they're not affected by it. It shuts down their competition. Seriously, like consider opening a, a simple coffee shop, like just, you know, a, a little coffee stand on the street and hire one guy and you'll see just how difficult it is, just, just how costly it becomes to do something like that. And again, like the, the biggest problem is that you're eliminating the teenagers from the workforce. Like when I was a teenager, I wanted to get a job when I was a kid. I couldn't unless uh, I was a girl. Like they, they would hire people for doing video chatting. Like when I looked at the newspaper, because we didn't have LinkedIn back then, we had the newspaper. Every single article, it's like we're looking for an ushikushi lady that can um, be charismatic in front of a camera. And I'm like, God fucking damn it. You know, and, and that and babysitters. But other than that, like for guys, I think it was construction. And in construction, you're also paid on the black, which means like you, you don't work with the contract, which means that the boss can screw you. And then taxes aren't raised. And all of this shit, it's like all of this nonsense. All of this nonsense is avoidable. It doesn't have to be. Um, but it is what it is, you know. And, and the thing is, like, again, like there, there are countries that don't have minimum wage. People don't run away from those countries. It's eventually the companies, they decide to raise minimum wage. I think Ford was one of the companies that um, was the first in the history of America to, to brag about doing this, right? Because they, they require skilled labor. So they notice that their employees keep leaving. So now they raise the, pri they raise the wages for their employees because they want skilled labor. But that's the thing. It's like, what labor are you doing? Like if it's a labor that literally every single person can do, like for example, flipping burgers at McDonald's, most people can do it. Doesn't require that much skill that it's not going to be paid very well. But if you're doing something that's uh, very unique, that only one person can do it, so for example, you're an actor, like a famous actor that can carry a movie, oh my God, you're going to make hundreds of millions of dollars because you're irreplaceable. So that, that's the question on how people are paid. Like, how replaceable are you? If you're very replaceable, well, then you're not going to be paid a lot. But the good news is that it's not the life, it's not a job that you have to do for your entire life. It's just like getting experience, getting used to waking up in the morning and going to work, getting used to having a boss, getting used to working in a team. Like all, all of this valuable experience that's not being taught in school is being robbed away from you. Why? Because companies would rather hire a robot th than to hire a cashier because it's cheaper. It's cheaper to have a robot. And the robot also doesn't pay taxes for the welfare. Just, just pointing it out there. So yeah, that, that's the argument against minimum wage. It's, it's nice, but again, I was in the workforce when Romania raised the minimum wage. A lot of people got fired. Uh, I now have to do the job of two other people. I, I would have preferred to be paid less, to be honest. Preferred to be paid less than to live with the stress that you might be fired than to uh, have to work a lot more than you did and the compensation didn't cut it. So whatever, you know. Uh, but, but here's another thing. And this is something else that I want to end the video with. This is what the left doesn't take into account. They spread society into poor people and rich people. But they never take into account that a person can climb and lower the ladder 
multiple times in their life. So when you start off, like, let's say you're coming from an average family and you're in high school, like you're, you're incredibly poor, right? Like you're dependent financially on mommy and daddy. Then you get a job and you're flipping burgers at McDonald's. Well, now you're a little bit more rich. But then let's say you, you manage to do very good at that job and you actually advance and you become like a, a manager at the restaurant. Well, now you're, you're a lot wealthier. And then you get married. And let's say you, ma you get married with someone else that has a job. Well, now, now your income is, is rising up again. And, and then maybe, you know, like your parents give you their house as their inheritance. Well, that, now your income is going up. So, you know, like people are stuck in a social position. They, they keep climbing and they're lowering. Like, like sometimes, you, let's say COVID comes and it shuts down your place of work. And now you're dirt poor again. Like, it's, it's not really like that. It's not really that, that there's like two classes of people that uh, do not interact with each other. But anyway, right. Let me know what you guys think. And I'll see you in the comment section. Take care.